follow me on Twitch. Listen, I've done this challenge multiple times before, but here we go again. The rules, I will be using OBS Studio only to create an overlay. I will be able to download images from the internet, but I'll try to keep it to a minimum. I can use the recording feature on OBS if I want to record video that I can use as animated overlays. And let me think, can I download videos from YouTube? That would be so easy. Let's say no. All right, so the goal is to simulate someone who downloaded OBS, so obviously has access to the internet and a web browser. and you know, doesn't want to use Adobe Photoshop, doesn't want to use Photopea, Canvas, nothing that has to do with editing software or even websites. But the true goal here is to give you a couple of tips and tricks. Maybe you will learn something about OBS. We are not using any plugins, so this is not even an advanced tutorial at all. So OBS bare bones as you download it. Now, I don't think this needs to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so there will be a little bit of time lapse here and there. But every time I'm using like a technique, I will try to tell you exactly what it is. So grab yourself a drink and we will begin right after this message from our sponsor. And this portion of the video is sponsored by Owned Pro. Owned Pro, as you know, is the service that allows you to have access to everything you need as a live streamer. But wait, something new just happened with Owned Pro. On top of the 600 plus premium overlays that are available in multiple languages, on top of their one click overlay and alert installer, on top of the chatbot that they give you, there's this new tab on your dashboard, which is the Epidemic Sound Collaboration with own pro providing you with dmca free music so you can live stream and play music in the background with this big big list of music genres check this out there's even a sound effect tab now the basic version of own pro is free but if you upgrade you will get full access to epidemic sound but don't get too scared about the prices because if you enter code gale then go to checkout, you will get a whole 50% off. So I'll let you check it out at own.gg slash pro. That is O-W-N 3D dot gg slash guy level pro all right so i create a new scene in obs starting from scratch and my first goal was to create something using my camera so i thought hey i'm gonna turn the lights on and then i'm gonna have like a part of them be out of focus so if you have an autofocus camera just put your finger in front of it and everything on the side is gonna be out of focus if you're using a logitech 920 and you're struggling what you can do is go to the um, video settings and turn off autofocus and basically what i did is record I tried to record like a perfect loop of my lights doing, you know, the RGB loop, but it didn't re really work out. And um, from there, I was ready. I just imported it as a media source. OK, that's how you import videos. And here what we're seeing here right now is a uh, color source. That is something that people don't talk about a lot when it comes to uh, OBS Studio. I would love for people to talk more about it because a color source basically allows you to do to place a bunch of rectangles. On top of that, another tip that I actually don't use in this video is you can also not only place rectangles, but you can rot rotate them. You can rotate them in any direction you want, any degrees you want, not just uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees. All you have to do is press Control E and then type manually what the degrees are. So what I'm doing here is I'm right clicking, clicking copy, and then right clicking again, clicking paste duplicate in order to create a new instance of those uh, rectangles. Um, when you see the green lines, that means that I'm cropping. I'm holding alt on my keyboard in order to crop. You can also stretch by using uh, shift, but I try not to stretch anything. Also, there's a weird thing with OBS when you stretch something and then you move it. Sometimes the, the stretch will cancel. So, yeah. Uh, after that, I went to Google Images. I, I searched for a transparent background for a rounded rectangle. Then I went, I right clicked on it, clicked on filters, added a color correction filter and on color add, I choose the color that I wanted. So what I'm going to be doing here is basically add them as some sort of a frame for uh, social media icons that I will add later. So, of course, I added this as an image source. It's an image. It's a PNG image downloaded from Google. So, of course, you're going to add it as an image source. I'm using my arrows on my keyboard in order to move it to the to basically keep it on the same horizontal axis. And uh, here you can see me grouping them up. You can hold shift to select multiple sources and then right click on that, click group selected items and then just name your group. Here I'm adding a text source and then um, it's probably gonna take a while because I'm gonna have to pick exactly which font I want. 
the thing is usually you will go with a design that has to do with the with the overall uh, uh, shapes and, and forms that you have already so if you're going with something very round um, very pastel colors you usually want round shapes or round font um, here you know it's basically my neon sign in my apartment and I can't do any glow so adding neon text wouldn't just I just can't add neon text basically I can have text that is the shape of neon but it can't be neon text so I had to kind of improvise but I did end up finding something that I like uh, you will see that in a little bit another technique that I just did right here is I added a space in between each letter in order to change the tracking I don't know if you can change it change the tracking straight into OBS but adding a space in between each letter definitely did the deal at the bottom here in the properties I centered the text and then I turned on gradient yes you can make a gradient in inside of OBS Studio without any plugins or whatever. So the gradient gives us that look of um, being a little bit more uh, thought out in a way it makes it look like it was already made in Photoshop in a way. I duplicated the text again, uh, right click, copy, right click, duplicate, paste duplicate that is so it creates a new um, instance of the text and I added just my name top left in order to decorate a little bit I'm not gonna lie this is not something that is important I'm not conveying any information but um, I know that streamers sometimes like to put their logos and stuff like that so um, definitely there's a space for that otherwise it's just a blank screen with starting soon you know uh, here I imported the Twitter logo so this is a transparent um, PNG image that I found on Google images so if you want socials um, icons for for your uh, overlays you can just right click save them from Google immediately right what I did here I also right click clicked on filters added a color correction filters and then color add I picked that color of the little frame around it that rectangle background basically that I made for the socials so that it would look maybe transparent but mostly so it would be very contrasted with um, the bright teal that is behind it right so it really pops out if someone is looking for the social they're gonna find it because it really it really stands out on the on the screen here I just added normal text I will later on I think I'm gonna change the color a little bit later but I picked a font um, that is different of course from this font so that it will be very visible while it's super small and then there we go I went for the teal when it comes to the color and then here I'm gonna do my copy duplicate once again in order to not um, waste any time adding a new thing and trying to make things match just copy duplicate and then all I did was move it you see how I'm moving it slowly uh, like that on the horizontal line that guarantees that it stays on said horizontal line and then I just eyeballed all the margins in between the icons and the actual text all right so probably just looking around thinking of what I can do probably renaming a couple of sources and uh, here was time to make the labels bar so we want some icons for cheerer for follower for maybe top donator or subscriber and I remember I had this gif of the actual uh, I think one bit cheer or that's a hundred bits and I decided to import it now if you're you're importing a GIF, even though it's animated, uh, it is an image format. It is an image sequence format. Uh, so you want to add that as an image source. Uh, I went to find a heart for followers and I was looking for something that not only has a transparent background, but also doesn't have like, you know, white pixels or jagged edges, something that looks clean enough that I can use it and you know no one will know that's just a gift that I downloaded from Google Images of course downloading stuff from Google Images you want to make sure that you're looking at uh, where, it, where it's coming from if it's from any portfolio website please do not do that you're practically stealing from artists um, other than that if it's from like freegifts.com uh, then you're pretty much good to go but also this is personal use uh, as long as you're not uh, selling those right so now I was looking for a crown crowns usually are for subscribers or top donators um, and I found this one that looked pretty cool and very minimalistic and I added it again they're gifts so I added them as image sources so you click the plus on your image uh, on your source list and you add them as an image source boom just place them using the arrows once again eyeballing them uh, not completely sure about the position trying to make everything look like um, like they're evenly uh, separated and I think I settled there yeah I probably settled there pretty pretty proud here um, okay so what's what else <laughs> I'm just clicking around I'm, I'm putting some order in between my layers quote-unquote layers my sources if you will and um, here I'm changing I'm changing back uh, I didn't like the gradient so I just went with full color I think I'm gonna go with white eventually 
Oh, um, for the, the background color, the solid blue color, dark blue color, I wanted to have a little bit of gradient, something that makes it look a little bit more polished and not just, you know, a big dark blue square. So I went and typed um, a gradient on Google Images and I found this image. It's kind of like a, a white ash, white ish grayish gradient but it's like um it's a um, mirrored gradient so only half of it was what i needed i went into filters so right click filter added a color correction filter and then i gave it this darker blue because it felt like it matched better than the actual dark teal dark teal is not a great it's not a pretty color <laughs> and um now i decided to actually add that video that we took earlier and make it really, really part of the overlay, right? So this is basically the top part. What you're looking at is, is the corner of my wall and my ceiling. And I put um, that little frame that I had, that little rectangle, I put it on top of it, added a color correction filter to that rectangle, and then lowered the opacity because opacity is one of the sliders that you have with the color correction filter. So if you want something to be like transparent, translucent, um, just add a color correction filter and then lower the opacity on it. There's a little bar that basically uh, stands out and I ended up liking it to the point where I'm actually gonna add another one at the bottom um, on said um, rectangle that is on top of the video that I just added. So here top right felt a little empty. So I was looking for something. I was like, is there like a, you know, a pre-made banner that says subscribe to Twitch Prime or maybe if the person is a Humble Bundle partner or something. And then I remembered there is something that I use top right on my screen. Well, here you can see me searching for, I'm searching for UI assets. I just wanted a little piece of graphic design so I can put in the corner, but I keep typing, I kept typing corner piece and I keep getting puzzle corner pieces. So I give up and then remembered, yes, I use a sub goal the twitch sub goal and um, I don't know if you know this but uh, you can customize the color now so uh, keep an eye out on that and I'm gonna customize it even more watch this so this is a browser source so it's not an image not a video it's a browser source so you add it as a browser source you copy paste the link and then you put the recommended size that twitch tells you it's like 1482 by 160 or something like that so now I'm placing it and then I'm gonna go to filters, add a color correction filter. And here I'm gonna play with the hue shift, right? Cause I went with purple. So now I want something that feels more teal. I can play with the saturation a little bit to pop, to make it pop a little bit more. And then I added a color, um, a color key. Cause I wanted to delete the black part, the background. So now it's basically an empty, actually transparent uh, sub goal that fills in with that color, the more subs you get. So if that's a look that you like, uh, here's how you can replicate it, basically. Um, here I'm going into the source, changing the name so I don't get confused. This is not something that I practice a lot, but I was um, trying to make a second overlay out of it because we're going to, yes, we're going to be making an intermission screen. You're going to see in a little bit. And at this point, I was pretty much done like this. I was pretty satisfied with this one. Just placing stuff and and making uh, putting them in order, um, retouching up a couple of things, you know, lowering the transparency on that so it's kind of transparent, um, and then trying out uh, with the height. If I wanted the height to be smaller, see how it would behave. Now, in order to create the intermission screen, I just right clicked on the starting soon scene that I created and I clicked duplicate. And it just duplicated. So you can see me testing a little bit of source just to see if it will move them. And uh, it didn't. So basically you can move the, the sources from the new scene that you created, the one that you duplicated. So I just turned off the text that said start, starting soon. I bumped up the social and I just cropped my webcam to make it fit. Uh, the nice, like the last finishing touch was to add a slide transition that, that comes with OBS and just put it to 300, 3000 milliseconds. That's three seconds. So it's super smooth. And this is the final result. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or at least learn a little bit about OBS and the different techniques. If you did, please leave a comment. Let me know what was your favorite part or if you have your own tips and tricks to use OBS to create stuff like that. Click the like button, subscribe, ring the notification bell. But also if you want to talk to me about content in general, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash level. On Fridays, we even review streams. So if you want to get your channel looked at by me, stop by on Friday, 8 p.m. CET or any other day of the week except for Thursday. I gotta thank you for watching this video. Go out there, make me proud. Get level out.